Hello guys, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel that is Sai Engineers. Today's video is going to be about things to remember before you go for your MHCT exam. The first topic which we are taking is continuity. So the most important rule which you can apply in continuity is the L'Hopital rule. Now in Ropital rule, whenever you have to apply that rule, you have to consider this condition. That is, if it is division of two functions, like let us say f of x and g of x, then you have to check for this condition, that is my f of a, that is whatever limit as x tends to a is given, if at that particular point, if both the functions, that is my f of x and g of x are zero, then only I will be able to apply my L'Hopital rule. Otherwise, the L'Hopital rule is not applicable. So you have to remember the function that is the ratio of these two functions should be always zero by zero whenever you are applying the L'Hopital rule. So if it is zero by zero, then the limit can be changed to f dash of x upon g dash of x. If again it's going to be 0 by 0 form, then again you can take the second derivative of both the functions. There are certain things which you can remember in this, like limit as x tends to 0 of root, nth root of 1 plus x minus 1 upon n mth root of 1 plus x minus 1, it will be given by m by n. So basically if you are having something like nth root of 1 plus x minus 1 by x, then it is 1 by n. The limit should be x tends to 0 for this also. The next thing you should remember is limit as x tends to 0, 1 minus cos mx by x square will be nothing but directly m square by 2. So this thing is basically you have to remember it and other thing which is you should remember is limit as x tends to 0 of sin of mx by x will be equal to nothing but m. Next going to the de derivatives chapter if you are having a function which is function of x minus y upon x plus y which is given to you as some constant value or if it is function of x square minus y square upon x square plus y square it is also given as some constant value then finding the derivative will lead to a y by x as the solution. The other one is if you are having function of x y is equal to some constant then the derivative of this function that is my dy by dx in this case will be equal to minus y by x. Now what do you mean by function of x minus y upon x plus y? It means that you have the terms which are present in this format like it can be your x minus y upon x plus y the whole square plus x minus y upon x plus y is equal to some value constant a. So if you are having something like this and if you want to find dy by dx of this then it is going to be simply y by x. Now if you are having something like this then in that case you can directly do your derivative term as 1 upon 2y minus 1 into du by dx. Now in this case my u is nothing but this function which is going to be present over here. The u can be x, it can be tan x or something like that. So in this case you have to find the derivative of that particular function which is present over here. Next you have to remember this particular rule that is my dx by dy is equal to 1 upon dy by dx but that does not imply that d square x upon dy square is 1 upon d square y by dx square. Next this comes under the application of derivatives wherein if you are having a function if you want to find whether it's going to be increasing or decreasing then if it is increasing then the first derivative is going to be greater than 0 if it is decreasing then it's, going, it's first derivative then its first derivative will be less than 0. Now the application of derivative maxima and minima problem if you are finding derivative of function and equating it to 0 and finding the roots of this particular equation and let us say that you get the root as c then the double derivative of that particular value that is a double derivative of c if it is going to be less than 0 then my c is nothing but the, uh, the value at which my function is going to be maximum 
if it is greater than 0 that means my double derivative is positive then it corresponds to the minimum value to find the value you have to then substitute your c in the function which is given to you so f of c is basically the maximum or the minimum depending on this particular condition next you should remember this particular thing that is finding the approximate value of a function so your f of a plus h is going to be approximately f of a plus h into f dash of a in this you have to remember that a is going to be that particular value for which you know exactly the value of f function like you know exactly the value of f of a and your h should be such that it's going to be as small as possible now these are some standard results which you should know that for various values of theta you should know the various values of sine this not only helps you in your trigonometry but also in the other chapters wherein you will be dealing with your trigonometric function remember your sine values then you can recollect your cos value by just reversing the order of the values and to find the tan it's going to be nothing but the division of the sine and cos next is these are the double angle formulas which you should recollect this will help you in solving of the trigonometric functions wherein you have to find the values of theta and so on it will also help you in solving the integration problems so your sin 2 theta should be equal to 2 sin theta cos theta cos 2 theta has three values that is your 2 cos square theta minus 1 1 minus 2 sin square and sin square minus cos square these formulas will help you to calculate these particular things that is if you are having a sin square or a cos square inside your integration then it should be replaced by these formulas now next one is the double angle formulas which can be represented by a single tan function so your tan 2 theta that is a double angle for tan 2 theta is going to be 2 tan theta upon 1 minus tan square your sine double angle is going to be 2 tan upon 1 plus tan square and cos double angle is going to be 1 minus tan square upon 1 plus tan square now this is my triple angle formula that is my sine 3 theta and cos 3 theta this again helps you in finding the integration if you are having some terms like integration of cos cube or a sine cube next one this again can be useful in your integration problems wherein if you are having a 1 plus or minus sin x term then it should be replaced by this particular value if it is going to be 1 plus or minus sin 2x term then it's going to be cos x plus or minus sin x next one is if you are having a sin x plus minus cos x or a cos x plus minus sin x then you can replace it by this particular value this will help you in solving of your trigonometric equations next one is for your allied angle formulas this becomes a in general format for it like if you are having a sin of n pi by 2 plus minus theta then it can be replaced by your plus minus cos theta now the value of your plus minus will depend on in which quadrant this particular angle is present now next one is if you are having a sin n pi plus minus theta then it will be plus minus sin theta again the plus minus will depend on the angle which is present in the quadrant like it will depend on what will be the sign for that particular angle which is present in that quadrant so you have to remember this particular system wherein in the first quadrant all the trigonometric ratios are positive in the second quadrant it is a cosine which is positive in the third it's a tan and the last one it's a sine which is positive now going for the inverse trigonometry the first one is my sine inverse of minus x is minus sine inverse x so that is same for my tan inverse x also but for my cos inverse of minus x it is going to be pi minus cos inverse of x the next one is your sine and cos is pi by 2 that is the sine inverse x cos inverse x is pi by 2 so they, they form the pair over here in this it's the sec and cosec which form the pair and in this it's the tan and cot which forms the pair the next one is uh, just like the pairing of this in this case that is my sine inverse of 1 by x it's going to be paired with cosec inverse of x 
so that pair you will be just replacing your angle by the one upon that particular angle so for my cos it's uh, so cos inverse of 1 by x will be equal to sec inverse of x and my tan inverse of 1 by x is nothing but cot inverse of x next one is my tan inverse of a plus minus b upon 1 minus plus a b in that case this particular can be simplified to tan inverse of a plus minus tan inverse of b next going for the last two chapters that is the binomial and the probability so you might be uh, knowing that for binomial theorem you require the term that is my nc0 nc1 ncn and all that so you can easily find those coefficient by using this called something which is called as a pascal's triangle so how do you construct the pascal's triangle you first start with your 1 1 and then you will be adding the numbers and writing it below it so if you are having 1 plus 1 it's going to be 2 over here then you will be adding these ones at the end for every line so getting for the next one it's going to be 3 uh, 2 plus 1 which is 3 2 plus 1 3 and the ones are added so you can continue going on so for whatever value of n you can go on continuing like that and the main important part over here is that probability of at least one so whenever it is asked prob finding probability of at least something at least one of the things to occur it will be equal to one minus probability of nothing of that occurring so this becomes easy for calculation purpose because for many times it is for at least one there are many terms to be calculated so it is easy if you just go for one minus probability of none of it next go into your integration chapter integration of e raised to x into f of x plus f dash of x that means a function and its derivative addition it's going to be e raised to x f of x so you have to look out whenever you are having e raised to x term into some function so you have to look out for a function and its derivative to apply this particular formula now if you are having multiplication of two functions and you have to find integration of that that is let us say that two functions are u and v so you have to go by integration by parts so you have to search for the functions whose derivative you are going to take and whose integration you are going to take so the function whose integration is to be taken is to be such that after taking various derivatives it's going to be zero or the integration function should be such that its integration can be found out easily so if you are chosen your u as the function whose derivative has to be taken you write it at the left hand side of the column and your v is going to be the integration function then that should be written at the right hand side taking the continuous derivative of your u and continuous integration of your v your u derivative should be uh, taken till it becomes zero or repeated in fashion and your v should be taken such that its integration is corresponding to zero or wherever you have stopped your u after that when the after that the solution will be given by drawing these arrows so you have to point from the first of the first column to the second of the second and the second to the third the third to the fourth and so on then you have to draw this uh, so next you have to take the sign that is alternate plus minus the first being the plus so you have to take the product of these two elements and take the sign as plus these two elements and take sign as minus these two elements and sign as plus and so on next is if you are solving by partial fraction method this is one of the easiest way to find the constant that is a and b so what you have to do is if i am considering this particular example which i am taking wherein i have in the denominator my x minus 1 and x minus 2 so for that i will require a and b as the constant to be found out if i want to find a what i will do is i will just look out for the denominator so it's x minus 1 so i'll be substituting x equals 1 in this particular bracket that is your left hand side except for this particular term so whatever is present in below my a should not be considered while substitution so once you have found what is the value that value is going to be your a value similarly for finding b you have to look out for the denominator so that's going to be x minus 2 so we substituting x equals 2 in this bracket that is lhs bracket except for your x minus 2 term 
so whatever value you will be getting that should be your d value next is the vectors in vectors you have to remember that a dot d bar that is a dot product is going to be magnitude of the vectors into cos theta your cross product is going to be magnitude into the sin theta that is the sine of the angle between them into n cap now this particular formula is very important when wherein you have to find a vector which is going to be perpendicular to both the vectors or a unit vector which is going to be perpendicular to both of both the vectors so it's going to be basically cross product of this divided by the magnitude of a bar cross b bar whenever you have to find a unit vector which is going to be perpendicular to a and b next one is your this particular relation which is going to be a standard form wherein you have a dot i into i plus a dot j into j plus a dot k into k it's going to be always a bar while finding the cross product you can use this particular circle so how do you remember it what you have to do is my i cross j is going to be k my k cross i is j and so on but if you are reversing the arrow that is you are going from i to k you will get minus j k to j you will be get my your minus i next one is you have to find if you want to find the unit vector of a vector then you have to just divide that vector with its magnitude next this is very standard if you are having a matrix and you want to find the inverse of that matrix so this is specially for a 2 cross 2 matrix only the inverse will be divided by the determinant of a into the changing of the diagonal elements and multiplying the non diagonal elements with minus 1 this is only applicable for a 2 cross 2 and not any other type of matrix next is related to your vectors again so if you want to find what is going to be your p bar that is your r bar basically the vector which is going to be internally dividing the line joining your a and b it will be given by this particular formula now how to remember this if it is given that it is dividing it into m is to n ratio so what you have to do is you have to cross multiply these ratios so it will be m into b bar and n into a bar divided by m plus n if it is external division which is asked then you have to just simply remove the plus and add the minus sign over there for midpoint formula it's going to be the addition of the two vectors that is the point vector position vectors divided by 2 for centroid of a triangle then it's going to be addition of all the vertices position vector divided by 3 for in center it's going to be this particular formula wherein your x y z are nothing but the sides so if you want to find the in center you have to basically remember the formula as your a into x your c into z and your b into y divided by addition of all the sides the squares of the addition of the directional cosines is equal to 1 then the box product or the triple vector product that is a bar dot b cross c bar is nothing but your abc so you have to remember that if it is going in the cyclic fashion that is your abc will be equal to bc a will be equal to c b uh, c a b then in that case the value remains the same but if it is going in the non cyclic fashion then you have to just add a minus sign to it to calculate it you have to use this particular determinant wherein your a1 a2 a3 are nothing but components of your a bar next is a very standardized results which you should know if a bar and b bar is given as perpendicular then in that case your dot product is going to be zero if they are given as parallel then their cross product should be equal to zero next this is related to your logic so in logic you have to remember these things these are very standardized things which you should remember while solving a logic problem so thank you for watching guys i am hoping that the video is helping you in your studies and your last minute revision also we have tried to cover up most of the points in as few minutes as possible we'll be also sharing with you some tips during your examination like what are the things to do and what are the things not to do during your exam and also time management while solving the paper so please stay tuned for that if you're new to the channel please subscribe 
please do like and share the videos and please do comment on the videos so till then keep watching keep learning and happy learning bye